Bonjour les enfants, comment ça va? Ça va bien? Um, hope you're keeping very, very well. I've got a bit of a cold actually. So I'm a bit comme ci, comme ça, but no worries. Anyway, I hope you're doing very well. So we're going to start linking together some of the vocabulary that we've been learning. And because we've been thinking about um, a house, une maison, We've been thinking about furniture, we've been thinking about rooms, we've been thinking about where things might be in relationship to each other, the prepositions. Now, wondering, what about talking about where we live? Where we live. So let's look at some simple vocabulary that we could use to describe where we live. And um, we could start to put that together in sentences as well. So we're going to think about the type of house that we live in, and then we're going to think about where that house might be or where your home might be. And um, there is are some oral and written optional um, exercises you could do at the end. And um, obviously keeping up with practicing all the way through. So I'm just going to share my screen and I'm going to ask a question. Où habites-tu? Où habites-tu? So où habites-tu literally means where do you live? Where do you live? Où habites-tu? Où habites-tu? Now, when you ask that question, excuse me, when you ask that question, um, or that is if you would ask somebody, that is what we would call the informal way of asking the question. To somebody that you know quite well, somebody of similar age, it would change if it was somebody you didn't really know if you wanted to have formal conversation with them. Um, however, because as we know, even in English, verb endings change depending on who's performing that verb. So, où, with an accent. Où habites-tu? Where do you live? Let's have a look. So, we would answer that question by saying, j'habite. J'habite. Could you say that with me? J'habite. And jabi literally means I live. I live. So what could we follow that with? We could say dans, dans une maison. Dans une maison. And normally, as you know, we don't pronounce the last letter of a word. But in this instant, because the S runs into a vowel, you would hear it. Dans une maison. So une maison, as you know, is a house. So it would be dans une maison. So could you say that? Dans une maison. You might live in an apartment. You might live in a flat. And that would be dans, dans un appartement. It's a bit longer word, but as you can see, it's very similar to apartment. But if you're going to spell that, excuse me, if you're going to spell that, remember, it's just a different spelling. Dans un appartement. Put your French accent on. Dans un appartement. So, un appartement. Can you say un appartement? Dans un appartement. So, if you live in a flat and somebody says to you, Où habites tu? You would say, J'habite dans un appartement. Where else might you live? Oh, you might live in a bungalow. Nice and easy for us. Un bungalow, masculine verb, uh, masculine noun, spelled exactly the same. So, dans un bungalow, dans un bungalow. So, if somebody says to you, who oh, have to, and you live in a bungalow, you'd say, dans un bungalow. Simple as that. You could live in a cottage. So, a cottage, slightly different to um, how we would say it in English. There's an accent if you were going to write it, and it's feminine. Dans une chemière. Dans une chemière. So could you say a cottage? Une chemière. Dans une chemière. There we go. So if you live in a house, dans une maison. If you live in, a, in an apartment or in a flat, dans un appartement. If you live in a cottage, dans une chemière. If you live in a semi hatch, that's like um, Madame Yates, you would say literally une maison jumelée, which literally means a twin house. Twin house. So a semi detached, when you've got two houses together, une maison, the house, but we would say the, the semi detached bit afterwards. So une, dans une maison jumelée. 
dans une maison jumelée. Just have a look at that for a moment. Just going to step aside. So, dans, no, actually, dans une maison jumelée. Can you say a semi-detached house? So, dans une maison jumelée. Now, what about where your home might be? You could be in your maison jumelée, or your chaumière, or your bungalow, or your appartement, or your maison, your house. You could be in the countryside. If you're in the countryside, we would say à la campagne. À la campagne. So if you live in a house in the countryside, it would be j'habite, I live, dans une maison, in a house, À la campagne, à la campagne. J'habite dans une maison à la campagne. Now, this is a bit different from our norm because we um, are pronouncing the, we are, sorry, putting sentences together. Whereas normally we just have simple words. So if you just wanted the word, une maison. If you just wanted to say countryside, à la campagne. If you wanted to, if you wanted to put it together, j'habite, I live. Dans une maison, in a house, in the countryside, à la campagne. J'habite dans une maison, à la campagne. You might live in a town. Now, a town, in a town, you would say en ville. So just have a look at that for a moment. En ville, you might even recognize it. Now, you would say en ville, whether it is a town or a city, so if it's St. Albans with its cathedral, or if it's Paris, or if it's London, you would still say en ville. So for a town or city, you would say en ville, which literally means you live in town. So if, like me, I live in a semi-detached house, in town, or in a town, I would say, j'habite, j'habite dans une maison jumelée en ville. J'habite dans une maison En ville, I live in a semi-detached house in town. Or in a town, same thing. So, où habite tu? Où habite tu? Where do you live? Your sentence starts with be j'habite. So, have a look at these sentences, uh, these, um, this vocabulary, parts of the sentence, and see if you can remember which is which. Which one would this be? If you said une maison, you would be right. So if you wanted to say, I live in a house, which in looking at something like this, you would say, j'habite dans une maison. Which one would this be? Hmm, which one is it? If you said un bungalow, you would be right. So if you wanted to say, some, if you live in a bungalow and somebody asked you, tu habites tu? You would say, you put the sentence together, j'habite dans un bungalow. If your bungalow was in, a, in the countryside and somebody said, tu habites tu? And you wanted to say, I live in a bungalow in the countryside, you would say, j'habite, <clears throat> sorry, dans un bungalow à la campagne. Full stop. What was this one here? Whoops, can you see it? At your right, un appartement. So you would say, whoops, you would say dans un appartement, in an apartment. If you just wanted to say block of flats, it would just be un appartement. You need your un or une and your noun. And this one, which one was this? Hmm, which one was it? You're right, une chaumière, une chaumière. And this one, une maison jumelée. And then you've got your en ville and your à la campagne. Now, sorry if where you live is not described there, but you could still practice the language um, and you could draw a picture of your house and if it's in a town or if it's in the countryside and you could write, uh, you could just label it. So I, if I would did this one, I just could say une maison jumelée. Or I might want to say, j'habite, I live, dans une maison jumelée. I live in a semi-detached house. I might want to go one step further, draw my house, draw it in a town and write a sentence. J'habite dans une maison jumelée en ville. Stop. 
So lots of options there, lots of things you could practice. You could just have conversation, asking somebody, let me to, where do you live? And answering, Jabi, I live, and completing it with saying what type of home you have, and then where it is. We could have carried on, we could have said by the beach, in the mountains, on a farm. We've chosen some, just a few there, but I hope it helps you to practice some French. You've got verbs in there, you've got nouns. If you wanted to, if you want to say, I live in a small house, you could try and practice that. J'habite dans un petit, sorry, dans une petite maison. But you have to then think about your relationship between your adjectives and your nouns and think about your agreements. But otherwise, you could just practice this. And I hope you enjoy that. Until next time, I am going to say au revoir.